Hello. In this box is a drawing tool set that belonged to an engineer or an architect from around 170 years ago. And somehow, almost 200 years later, it has reached my desk, into the hands of a modern day architectural technologist. And let me tell you, the set inside this box is beautifully preserved. Here, I'll lift the lid and show you the artifact laying torment inside this mahogany box. Look how beautifully preserved this centuries old set is. Shiny and clean. Such a pleasure to look at. I'm living my life as a modern day building planner and I feel as if I've come into contact with something mystical. Something that has an ancient story behind it and that I'm about to unlock its power by wielding it in the modern day. I am going to go through each tool and present them to you one by one so that the world can get a good look at the majestic brass tools of the 1800s. But first some history. How do I know that these tools are from the 1800s? Or more accurately, the 1850s and onwards? I have a research booklet which is titled Drawing Instruments 1850 to 1950. It was by researching through this booklet that I had discovered the origin of these splendid brass tools. So I'll now show each of the tools inside this mysterious box in detail and give some descriptive guidance from the booklet. The box has a lock mechanism, but I don't have the key. It didn't make it to me over its almost 200 year journey. I'll have to hunt one down somehow. When I open the box, there is a peppery smell inside. It's not a bad smell. I've opened some boxes before which have a bad musty smell. But this peppery smell isn't bad. There's some writing penciled in on the side. It has some initials that say JH. Maybe it belonged to someone named JH. It says 235 I think it says. I'm not sure what that might mean. It looks like there's two more sets of initials underneath. I think it says AMP or AMF. And then it seems that there's a date underneath. 18 slash 6. So the 18th of June maybe? If this was penciled in by the original owner, it's too bad that he didn't mark the year. Or maybe someone in the modern day vandalized this box. Who knows? So the first tool, the largest of the set, and probably the one that caught your eye first, a divider. It feels ornate to handle this tool. If you're watching this and you don't know, a divider is used to transfer measurements. I mention that because as a modern day architectural technologist who uses computers and BIM software, I didn't know what most of these tools were myself. So you measure a distance and set the divider to the measurement. And you can then use the divider to set the same measurement anywhere you need on the drawing. This divider from this set, particularly, has some notable features to point out. It has a knuckle joint, so this can bend. On a compass, the purpose of it is to keep pens and pencils pointing downwards on the drawing surface. On the divider, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's the same reason to keep the pointer vertical. Also, there is a hollow cutout from the dividers, and this is to allow fine adjustment of the dividers or compass. So when you squeeze the hollow points, it will cause the dividers to open minutely as required. At the end, you see an adjustable needle tip or pointer tip. And the reason for the replaceable side is that these tools get damaged easily when dropped, if dropped. And so if the solid side got damaged, it could render the whole tool useless. But the solid side would stay in place, whereas the clamped side could move unless it's gripped tightly. And finally, a point to note, the joint of the divider can be dismantled and it's lubricated with beeswax. The booklet has made mention that oil was never used. Maybe oil gets too messy for the hands. If anyone knows the reason why, you could let me know. 
The booklet hasn't elaborated on it. But I think if the joints were oiled, it would cause accidental grease marks to appear on the drawing, which wouldn't be ideal. Number two, small solid divider. Here's a small divider. It doesn't have any knee joints, but the points are made as solid pieces throughout. It's very satisfying to feel the precision engineering of these tools when opening and closing them. Number three, attachment, large divider lead attachment. This, which I didn't know before because I never looked at it, is an attachment for the large divider. I can put a two millimeter thick lead in it and turn the large divider into a compass. It also has a knee joint for adjusting the lead and keeping it vertical. Number four, small divider lead attachment. Here's another exact mini version of the large divider and its own attachment. I guess this would be used to have more control over drafting smaller circles. Number five, ink bow compass attachment, spring bow pen, large and small. These interesting bird beak looking attachments are fitted to large and small dividers to turn them into ink bow compasses or spring bow pens as some books call them. As demonstrated, they are designed to hold ink in between the beak-like nibs. The distance between the nibs can be adjusted by the screw handle, and this allows different line thicknesses. A clever tool of its time in contrast to today, where to have different line thicknesses, we collect a set of many pens. But maybe having a set of pens is better than having to readjust a spring pen every single time. A good quality spring pen will hold the ink correctly for proper ink distribution. You can see the image here for how the ink should be held in the spring pen. If it doesn't look quite right, the spring pen can be ground into the right shape with a grindstone and a careful pair of hands. Here's a demonstration of drawing circles with a loaded spring bow compass and a show of different line thicknesses drawn. Number 6 dedicated bow compass and ink bow compass small. These two are small dedicated compasses, one for a two millimeter lead and the other an ink bow compass. They speak for themselves. They make small circles. I'll show you a good view of them all around. The difference between these little ones is that they have knurled handles. K-N-U-R-L-E-D knurled handles. Otherwise they might be a bit too small and fiddly to handle without these. Number seven, extension attachment large. This tool is an extension attachment for the large divider for drawing large circles. The lead and ink bow attachments have the knee joints, which can be used to keep the pen or lead vertical for a stable drawing. Here's a demonstration of that.
Number 8. The Ruling Pen This is a ruling pen. It has the same end as the ink bow compass, and it works the same way except that it's used to draw straight lines. The line thicknesses can be adjusted with this also. According to the research book, most ruling pens of the old time had handles made of ivory. And by that, I would think that this handle is made of ivory also. It has an interesting texture to the touch. It doesn't feel wooden. And I don't think they had plastic back in those times. The handle actually feels as if it's a polished bone. So it most likely is made of ivory. Here's a demonstration of this pen also. Number 9. Hidden Compartments Finally, there are two hidden compartments in this box. The first one is accessed by lifting the tool set encasement out. And inside are various tools. A wooden scale rule with an interesting shape at its end. I'm not sure why it's shaped like this. A French curve. A parallel line measuring tool, I think. I noticed that there were some protrusions from the parallel line transferring tool and I had this idea that maybe the scale rules and shape fits into it somehow. It seems to be able to interact with it. Maybe this is for making perpendicular lines or lines at other angles. In the second compartment there are true protractors. One made of brass and another old one made of plastic. Here's a closer look at the brass one. You can enjoy looking at its warm, gleaming shine. Number 10. Conclusion And that was a set of brass engineering drawing tools from almost 200 years ago and it sailed over the waves of time and ended up in front of me on my desk. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that I've earned a like and a subscribe from you. Let me know if this video interested you and I have some other sets to look at as well. Thanks for watching.